What's up gamers, Lexu here with a Diablo 4 update. No face cam for this video because I'm not feeling well, but it's still a great day because Blizzard has released a new blog post titled Diablo 4 Open Beta Retrospective, Transforming Feedback into Change. It sounds like they've been listening to the hordes of feedback they received since the last beta test ended. So let's go over the changes and my opinions on them. After the early access and open beta weekends concluded, the development team read through all your feedback and reviewed gameplay data. Using this information, we have made a variety of fixes and updates to various systems in Diablo 4, all of which will be present in the version of the game that launches on June 6. Great news here, Blizzard is already applying the feedback they got to the game before it even comes out. The first section of changes has to do with dungeons, an important gameplay activity. One of the most common pieces of feedback we received is that players felt like they were doing a lot of backtracking within certain dungeons. We have optimized multiple dungeons across all zones to minimize the need for backtracking. Optimizing dungeons so that there's less downtime is always a great change, especially if you plan on farming these repeatedly. The chance for an event to spawn inside a dungeon has been increased from 10% to 60%. Sounds like, sounds like more fun on a consistent basis. The rest of the dungeon tweaks mainly focus on reducing that downtime even further. Monsters would seek out the player to make kill objectives easier. Some of the dungeons required you to gather Animus, and it now gives you 10 resource and reduces your active cooldowns by 1 second to make it even easier. Depositing and rescue time was also reduced to speed things up. While carrying some of these quest objectives you receive a momentum boost granting a 25% move speed increase to you and nearby allies. This doesn't make much sense from a logical perspective that you would be moving faster when carrying a heavy object on your back. But usually you're backtracking to drop these items off, so it makes sense to reduce this downtime. Overall, dungeons were really fun and interesting in the beta tests, so I'm glad to see these updates. Now let's get to the good stuff, class changes. Good class balance is imperative to both PvE and PvP in an online game. Effects like stun and freeze can be applied to elite monsters twice as long before they become unstoppable. So I did notice if you crowd control an elite for too long, they break out of it and become unstoppable. This is their solution to prevent infinite CC chains. It did seem like elites would sometimes break out of CCs within 2 or 3 seconds, so this is probably a good change. Reviewed class skills to confirm that all classes have access to sufficient skills that remove crowd impairing effects. Another solution to CC chains except this time it's for the player. We already saw many skills given unstoppable, even for a brief moment to break out of CCs. This is absolutely necessary for PvP so you can actually play your character. So making sure every class has enough unstoppable skills is good for balance. Many legendary powers have had updates to their effectiveness. This one's really vague, it doesn't tell us which legendary powers or if they were even nerfs or buffs. But there were a lot of gaps here in power, so hopefully they make them more even. A flat 10% passive damage reduction has been added for the Barbarian class. Some passes had their damage reduction effects reduced to compensate. I was under the impression that Barbarian already had this. I felt like Barbarian was the hardest class to keep alive, so this is a much needed addition. The Warwind skill now deals more damage and consumes more fury. Warwind was the worst core skill to pick starting off by far, so hopefully this change makes it actually playable. The Double Swing skill enhancement refunds its full fury cost when used on stun or knockdown enemies. Previously this only refunded 15 fury, and the full cost is 25 so this is a buff. Barbarian seems like it's in a good place now with the 10% DR to help with the early leveling. Although they didn't address the concerns of Barbarian having more weapon slots for extra stats and legendary aspects, potentially giving them more power than other classes in the endgame. Moving on to Druid, companion skills were now deal heavily increased damage. I thought it was laughable how weak companions were even with legendary aspects to increase their damage. All ultimate skills had their cooldowns reduced. Druids did have some long cooldowns here ranging from 50 to 80 seconds. But I felt like cooldowns were too long for every class. Oftentimes they really weren't useful because you had to save them until the boss fight. It seems like there might be builds that revolve around ultimate skills, increasing their damage and reducing their cooldowns. But I feel like they need to be reworked to make them more consistent. Using a non-shape-shifting skill will transform a druid back into their human form. This is a buff because their skill tree nodes that give you more spirit and damage when you change forms. I'm surprised they didn't address the main problem of druid in the beta tests and that was viability of starting core skills. Landslide was the only core skill that did enough damage and everything else was way too weak to use starting off. Moving on to the Necromancer, summoned minions would die more often, requiring players to utilize corpses more often. Just why Blizzard why? I, I, I don't get this change. I get that they want players to be more active in the playstyle, 
but minions already had a hard enough time staying alive against bosses long enough to deal damage. And if you include the fact that you don't have as many corpses during a boss fight this gets even worse. Many bonuses in the Book of the Dead have had their stats increased. I'm looking forward to the buffs there. The damage dealt by the corpse explosion skill has been reduced. Now this nerf is kind of an odd one and I think Blizzard missed the mark here. The problem was the explosive mist legendary aspect instantly exploding all corpses and cooling down blood mist so you could recast it and always be immune. Instead of addressing the overpowered aspect, they nerfed the skill directly. I don't agree with the direction of this change. It's not looking too good for necromancers considering these weird and maybe even off base changes. Rogue has some buffs of increased bonuses to subterfuge and passive skills. And then a nerf to all imbuement skills increasing their cooldowns. Imbuement skills were really powerful with every build pretty much utilizing them. These changes might give us some other options and it's always good to have more build flexibility. It doesn't seem like Rogue was touched too much and it remains a strong class. They didn't touch my favorite skill, Twisting Blades, so I'm excited to play that on release. For the Sorcerer, Charge Bolt's damage was increased and the mana cost was decreased. This skill went unused so this is a much needed buff. Oh boy here we go, decrease the damage of Chain Lightning and reduce its effectiveness against bosses. This is probably one of the most obvious nerfs to see coming. Chain Lightning Sorcerer had the easiest start of all classes in the beta. I'm curious to see how hard this was nerfed and how they handled the reduced effectiveness against bosses. Decrease the cooldown for the Incinerate Skills Enhancement bonus. This used to be a 20 second cooldown so it's a welcomed buff. Firewalls are now spawn underneath enemies more frequently when using its enchantment bonus. This was barely proccing before so this is a much needed change. Increase the lucky hit chance for the Meteor Skills Enchantment bonus. This has been changed a few times now. At first you didn't need a lucky hit at all and then they gave it a minuscule 3% chance to proc off of a lucky hit. So this number definitely needed to be increased. Overall I think the Sorcerer would still be a great starting pick as long as Chain Lightning wasn't nerfed too hard. You can switch to Hydro once it's unlocked anyways. I'm actually surprised they didn't nerf Hydro at all. The UI changes all seem pretty good. Fixed an issue where actions could not be bound to the mouse wheel. I know a lot of fellow Diablo free players having an issue not being able to bind force move to the mouse wheel. Character stats shown by default instead of materials make sense to me. Primary attack is mapped separately from interact now. Under the encounters section some bosses were re-evaluated for melee character difficulty resulting in changes to attacks and fight mechanics. I did notice some bosses were backdashing too often or moving around too rapidly for it to be fair for melee characters. Sellers were a bit underwhelming so their rewards have been improved. Under general quality of life they fixed an issue where players could increase attack speed by move cancelling attacks early. This was really broken and players would end up using macros to abuse it so I'm glad it's fixed. The reset dungeon button has been disabled. I'm thinking this change came to be because we weren't full clearing dungeons in the beta. We were just going into dungeons to farm the groups of monsters and elites before hitting the reset button, skipping the boss. I'm assuming the dungeon still resets when you kill the boss so this is just forcing us to do a full clear, which is a positive change to me. I've asked Blizzard for clarification on this issue already so hopefully we get a response soon. And that covers it all, let me know what you think in the comments below. Or join our discord community for more discussions. Peace out and happy slaying.